What's up everybody? It's the Common Sense Investor coming at you with another video. In this video, I'm focusing again on my response to the Special Master's recommendation to the courts. In this video, I'm specifically targeting the Special Master Amato's perspective on the postcard nightmare. Okay, The Special Master Amato also stated in her preliminary statement that the notice to the lawsuit was adequately disseminated to shareholders. This too is incomprehensible. Hundreds upon hundreds of shareholders have complained to the court that AMC did not adequately disseminate the notice. The court ordered AMC to send by mail postcard to all shareholders. The record reflects only 2.8 million individuals who were either mailed and or emailed a notice. AMC Allegheny both declare that at least 3.8 million shareholders exist. AMC and Allegheny both declare there are at least 3.8 million shareholders. Are we to believe the notice was adequately disseminated while over 1 million AMC shareholders did not receive a notice? This fact alone shows AMC's rebellion to the rule of law set down by this court. Are we to ignore the fact that many shareholders received more than one postcard notice, while over a million shareholders received none? On this issue, the court must weigh in. Does the court believe the notice was adequately disseminated, or do we come to the conclusion that AMC simply not wanting to be bothered with the problem passed the buck to computer share who passed the buck to the broker's firms who blotched the court's wishes. The argument has been made that if a shareholder complained to the court about not receiving the postcard notice, then their complaint shows the court they knew of the settlement. However, to dismiss their complaints is also dismiss AMC from the responsibility to notify every shareholder as the court wished. I had to add that part in there. The court did not inform AMC to notify everyone who does not know about the settlement. They are instructed to notify every shareholder through postcard notification of the lawsuit and proposed settlement. Both Allegheny and the special master closed their eyes to the real issue. Did AMC comply with the court's order to mail each shareholder a postcard notice of the lawsuit and pending settlement? The, and the answer is a resounding no, they did not. Then how did the special master reach her conclusion that AMC adequately dis, disseminated the notice? Then in my next argument, I'm challenging the majority of stock, common stock and preferred stock approved proposals. It appears that special master Amato stands alongside AMC and Allegheny in misinforming the court that a majority of common stockholders approved the charter amendments. This could be no further from the truth. Everyone involved in this case, from the plaintiff, defendants, 2.8 million shareholders, and the court knows beyond a doubt that approximately 25% of the Class A common stocks voted in favor of the proposals. I pointed this particular issue out in my official letter of objection when I stated that after inspection, of lead counsel's proposed settlement, it was evident that the filing was riddled with mis misleading facts that could jeopardize and harm the settlement class, thereby making it void and the need for a new proposed settlement be presented to the court. How does special master how does the special master defend AMC and Allegheny's position that a majority of shareholders voted in favor of the proposals? by performing the same magic trick plaintiffs and defendants have used repeatedly throughout this case. She lumps all shareholders, AMC, AMC Preferred Special Dividend, and AMC's at the money offerings into a single pile. According to the Special Master on March 14, 2023, AMC convened the special meeting at which the certificate amendments were approved by a majority of the common stock and preferred stock voting together as a class. If one assumes that both common stockholders and preferred shareholders are one class, then why differentiate, then why differentiate between dividend apes and at the money apes later in the SMR? Because the two are not 
equally created. The special master, in her own words, stated, I use plaintiff's valuation methodology, but make the opposite assumption that 100% of the ape units distributed to the class members as a dividend of their shares of common stock were kept and are part of the class's overall equity, overall equity ownership of AMC. Here's the special ma here the special master shares her understanding. There are three same yet separate securities here. AMC Class A shares, AMC Preferred Series A special dividend shareholders, and AMC Preferred Shares AMC Preferred Series A at the money shareholders. The distinction can be seen in the chart below. And here's why I'm showing. 40% of the equity was taken from AMC. That's the special relationship between the APE dividend and the AMC dividend. And the at-the-money offerings do not share the same benefits as the dividend APEs because 40% of the equity was used to create them. All right. AMC Common Stock and AMC Preferred Equity Units called the special dividend share a distinct relationship. 40% of AMC shareholder equity was taken from them in the middle of the night, and AMC's preferred Series A convertible shares were born. The special master distinguishes between the special dividend apes and the at-the-money apes when she states the ape dividend is part of the overall equity ownership of AMC. If this distinction is recognized in her financial analysis, should it not be recognized throughout her legal reasoning of the entire case as well? Furthermore, we see yet another division of the ape securities when we watch the tears fall from the plaintiffs defends the bona fide buyers of AMC's preferred equity units, i.e. Antar Capital. Now, with each level of securities established, how would it be possible to assume that at the money offerings and the special dividends are separate in a financial standing, yet distinction is not to be considered as it relates to the voting power? It is a fact. Defendant Aaron and the board, along with Antar Capital, put forth a scheme to stack the deck in a corporate election against retail shareholders of Class A common stock. A blind person can see that. So, why in all of her due diligence does the special master ignore the vote manipulation? And instead, she sides with AMC and Allegheny in saying a majority of shareholders voted in favor of the proposals. After AMC stockholders rejected twice the board's proposal to increase the number of authorized shares, the defendants were introduced to a way to circumvent shareholders' wishes by issuing preferred shares. As this class member points out in the original letter of objections to the settlement, in the WorldCom case, the court emphasized its responsibility to scrutinize the settlement to ensure it adequately addresses the alleged misconduct and protects the rights of the affected parties. The special master's animate response to the give and get excludes her responsibility to scrutinize a settlement to ensure it adequately addresses the alleged misconduct and protects the rights of the affected parties. Now, I covered a lot in that, okay? I covered the postcard situation. I covered the fact that people were complaining they didn't get their postcard, and we're being told, well, it don't matter. You know about the settlement. That's not the point. The point was we notified the court that AMC did not do what they were instructed to do, and a special master totally ignored that, and she claimed that it was adequately disseminated. So we'll see how that argument turns out. Also, I attacked, as you can see, the fact that the special master didn't even take into consideration the crimes that have possibly been committed in this play. The fraud, the allegations, none of that mattered to her. All she was worried about was the give and the get, and that was it. <coughs> she had totally ignored her responsibility to make sure that the alleged misconduct did not happen 
and that the court would not sign off on crimes being committed against shareholders in the state of Delaware. So with that, I'm on the job, fixing to walk next door, take care of my business over there. I'll be back around lunchtime. I'll get started again. So there you go. Love y'all. Be blessed. And I'll see you in the next video.